Hey, what is up everybody? Blades for here and today I for you guys another video of Persona 5X. Inside today's video, guys, we're gonna be talking about a new beginner's guide here, seeing that it is the 100 day since this game has dropped on CN, and we're gonna go ahead and celebrate it. So without further ado, you guys, we're gonna be covering a few things, such as either best teams that you guys wanna go ahead and look at, pretty much the respective DPSs, mementos, and the palaces included, some recommended confidants, and then lastly, Persona Inheriting. All this stuff is going to be having at least different timestamps so of course be sure to go ahead and just skip through the video with whatever you need to learn but without further ado let's go ahead and jump straight into the video okay so starting to look at the teams in their respective dps's we're going to actually go this in order of the pretty much reruns so seeing that joker is going to be rerunning in the 2.0 update we're going to start off with the curse team leading to the electric teams and things of that nature you guys can kind of skip around when it does come to this as well so Without further ado, let's get into it. So our first team that we're gonna be looking at is going to be the Curse Team. This Curse Team is actually fully revolved around Joker. And in 2.0, this character gets a, a massive rework, which is absolutely amazing. That makes him way more useful. For some of you guys who actually don't know about this, Joker pretty much at this point, for each Fury stack that he gets, which is one of his main things that he's allowed to do, he's actually able to not only raise the cap of when he's able to get these said Furies, but also deal more damage on targets that he's not selecting. This is really helpful. He's able to also get some decent attack buffs here as well, and it makes his curse team even more deadly. So with this team, you would definitely want to go ahead and run Joker, Ren, and if possible, if you have the character, Marion. This in general is going to help you out, and we're going to go really in detail after, of course, explaining this in a second. And then for the Navigator, I would highly suggest using Okeon seeing she is an offensive Navi, and if you are blessed enough to have, of course, Phoebe, you would want to go ahead and use her because she's like an updated, more overpowered Okeon by any way and form. But going back to how his team does work, Joker is going to be your main DPS. With this in mind, this character is insane now. At first, he was a little bit lackluster, but now that they've actually fixed him, he has became even more of a damage dealing character in every way. And you don't even need dupes for the guy. Pretty much. This character works off his Fury, as I did state before, and the more Fury you got, the better it's going to be for his damage markers. With at least the max amount of Fury, which I think should be now 5 in 2.0, he's not able, well, he's now able to deal the max amount of damage that he wants to deal, but he's also able to get a second turn that can help him deal even more damage. With this in mind, he also has an highlight that can give him a Fury stack that does supreme amount of damage as well, and you guys really want to take advantage over this. With this in mind, this comes in handy with having Ren. Ren is going to be the main deal for this team as well because she's able to at least shred defense. Pairing this with a good attacker and a person who's able to shred defense is automatically better, but what Ren also does for this team is giving a forgotten stack on an enemy. The way she does this is by at least having a Mamba Soup stack, which comes from at least one of her main little optimal abilities in general. After you use a certain amount of moves, usually you want to use, um, I think it was um, her first skill here or her second skill, it would end up giving you one of them that is able to actually deal um, the Mamba Soup effect. What this allows them to do is put a Forgotten on the enemy. So now the enemy cannot attack you anymore. They can only do basic attacks. They can't use any of their actual skills in general. They can only do basic attacks. Now, it is a little bit of a chance. So you do have to kind of cross your fingers at times, but it helps out a lot seeing that she's now able to make the enemy forget their actual moveset and also shred their defense. Now with this in mind, you also do have the healer that is an amazing sustain. She's in the beginner banner, so it makes it even easier to get this said character. And with this, she actually has a really powerful kit to boot. And this, at least in this circumstances, as long as you have full health and she heals, she gives everyone a attack buff or a penetration buff as well, which can help out this team overall, allowing you to deal as much damage as possible. In general, I feel like this is really what you want to go for. If you don't have Minami, especially if you're a person who's already playing and things like that, you could very well use Morgana as an absolute option, though it would be better to go ahead and use Minami if you want overall damage. Now, with this in mind, you also have the girl herself, which is Okeon. She's just going to be overall DPS. The more freaking things that you have on her, the better, like attack, crit rate, stuff like that, because navigators themselves are allowed to share a lot of their stats. 
This is through the attribute boost that they usually have in their kits here, which is the property boost right here. And all it does is share a little bit of a percentage of their stats, and she is meant for straight up offensive. The same goes for Phoebe, but with Phoebe, she's able to be a little bit more like just hands on with things and give you a lot more buffs, especially if you do have her. But once again, this character is already out currently. So if you do want to try and use a team with her in it, you got to get her now. And she really does not disappoint at all. But this is for just the curse team. Let's go ahead and move on to the electric team. All right, so taking a look at our electric team here, you would definitely want to use Yui as your main DPS. Yui, without a doubt, is going to be amazing for anyone who does not have her and people who do have her even more so better. This character will also be getting rerun eventually in the future, and she takes low investment and she gives out a ton in return. You don't really need this character's five star as well, so it is a really good character to have as a beginner in general. And with her actual electric team, she makes it known that she can deal a ton of damage. I'm right, she's probably one of the most top tier units inside of this game as well, alongside of like Yusuke, Makoto, and things of that nature. So she really does do a lot of damage. So how are we gonna go about her team? Of course, we're gonna have her inside the team no matter what is your main DPS. You didn't wanna go ahead and try to focus on using um closer now closer herself may be getting replaced especially since that we have um or at least we're going to be getting cord cord is probably going to be the better character to go for if you guys don't know exactly who that is i made a video on her so go check that out i'll probably have it in the top right of the screen but closer is going to be really good to use as well for this electric team giving her some nice attack buffs and then you want to use marion once again Marion is kind of a stable for all these DPS teams in general because of the attack and pin percentage that she gives a lot of things in which this comes in handy no matter who you're facing. Of course, you don't if you don't have Marion, you very well could use Morgana once again. I don't recommend it, but if you do need a healer, that would probably be your go to. Now coming down to at least the fourth character that you want to use here, you would like to use Okeon and Phoebe once again. These two characters are also really good for at least offensive order in general. And I feel like replacing them is a little hard to do, especially if you are utilizing this to the max capacity. So with how this works, let's just go into detail with at least Yui first. Yui herself is a follow-up DPS. She, no matter what, will deal a ton of damage once she actually gets a couple buffs and things of that nature, and it makes her very, very dangerous. With this in mind, you're mainly going to be utilizing her first skill, which does a ton of damage, exploding bricks sometimes, but you're also going to be using her buff. This buff herself allows her to actually get those follow up attacks and deal a ton of damage with this. This in order, once you actually do buff her with either Wonder or buff her with Closer by using Closer single target, makes her an absolute unit. At this point, you're going to be hitting numbers that are easily abnormal. I think a lot of us, when we first started using this character, she was just hitting 100K on a single target like it was easy. So this character in general, once you do have her pretty okay-ishly built, she definitely brings in some results. Now with this in mind, you wanna go ahead and use the closer character with here. She is a four-star character, pretty easy to get. And there isn't much that really have to talk about with her. With her single target attack here, we're able to at least get a strength debuff or at least a strength buff here, which does help out quite a lot, especially when we're trying to at least buff up our team in general. She does have two AOEs, but you really won't be using these too much. They don't really offer too much to the team, but this main single target does help out a lot, seeing that Yui does rely on a lot of those follow-ups. Just by targeting someone with a single target that already does some decent damage, Yui's gonna come up, deal some decent damage as well. So you technically have two DPSs in this one team. Now, once again, as we said for Marion, you're gonna have those nice old buffs as long as they're at least above um, their full health, of course. You get a buff, this is gonna help you out with the blessed stacks, and you're just gonna keep that sustainability that you very well need. Once again, if you don't have her, you would use Morgana, which isn't really a bad situation seeing that Morgana could proc a winded status, which all in all does decrease the overall defense of an enemy. But in terms of actual sustain and helping out your team, Marion's going to be the go to. Now, with this in mind, you also want to go ahead and use Okeon. Once again, attack buffer. Absolutely amazing. I don't think you got to go over too much with them, too. And the same goes for Phoebe. But that's just the electric team. We didn't have the next team coming in hand, which is going to be the ice team. So let's go ahead and take that. Take a look at that. 
Taking a look at the man Yusuke, this is where things kind of switch up when it came out to the DPS side of things here. And this character, whenever he does come back, is going to be a really good character to build upon. He's all the way built off of defense and his whole team will show you exactly how much it actually can change. It's one of the first ice DPSs that we do have, especially the first uh, five star ice DPS. The other one that we did have was Mont, which was pretty okay, but he definitely changed the game plan easily. So for this team, he's going to be the main center attraction. And since he is revolved around defense, you want to have some defense related units that really bring out the best of his abilities. So first things first on your team that you want to go ahead and use is going to be Yuki. Yuki herself is one of the few characters I wholeheartedly just defend, especially for his team here. She helps out in so many different ways that it's just unbearable and which is crazy good in general. She gives out some shields, she helps out just defense buffs and everything like that. And she actually has blessed stacks, which can help heal you as well. Now with this in mind, you could use Ren in this team. This does help out quite a lot, seeing she gives off that defense shred. And this is one of the few teams that you very well could use to make Yusuke really bring out some of that crazier type DPS. Now with this team as well, you're gonna finally change your navigator, which does come in handy with Puppet, and I'll get fully in detail with her. If you guys wanna know more about her as well, there should be a video I came out recently which discusses her build and things like that. Check that out because it goes fully in detail with this character and she makes this team even better. But let's go ahead and take a look at Yusuke first. Now Yusuke, this is the one character that was built off defense. You're mainly gonna keep a lot of defense on him in which that is his go-to thing. Think of defense as his attack and that is all you need to know. The more defense, the better. Crit rate, stats, stuff like that, the better. He's gonna deal a ton of damage. He has a couple counters that can just go ahead and proc at any time, but he also has a built-in counter that gives him not only just a shield, but an AOE counter once he is attacked. Now this can be proc every, I think, two turns as well. So once you go ahead and use it one turn, you're able to do it again. Now, my Yusuke here is pretty much free to play, and he also has a five-star weapon. With this in order, at least all of this in mind, you're able to deal a ton of damage with this character, and it really did bring a little bit of a different little play style. Now, in order to get the most out of him, we did mention Yuki. Yuki herself is going to give so much light to this team, seeing she's giving out those defense buffs that we did talk about, which is a single target defense buff here, and she's able to at least heal the team, seeing she has a single target bless here. Whoever this bless goes on, of course, will give you a little bit of heal, which is always nice to have. And since we're mainly already sustained, you don't really need a healer for this team. You just really need to have defense. So even Wonder himself can actually be using a defense related persona that makes this team even better. Now, Ren, as I did say for this team, is going to be pretty much one of the better options, which will help you out with the defense shred, but there are other teams that you could use as well. Now, Ren herself is just gonna help out with the skill too, as well as just her regular old highlight and things like that. And that will make this team very, very much so dangerous, while also giving Puppet the absolute performance of giving you shields, giving you defense buffs, giving you things like that nature that can absolutely save you if you are at lower health, and just give you, in general, good stats like all the navigators do once again they do share their actual attributes and things like that with their attribute boost to their teammates so having them with a couple offensive things but a lot of defensive things especially when it comes down to puppet really does come into play now this is just one of the teams that he can run there's not many teams that actually drastically change but for yusuke he can actually change quite differently and he's very free to play friendly so for Yusuke as well, you would go ahead and use himself, but you also have the option of using Soy. Now Soy pretty much does what Rin does, but at a lower, I guess not really a lower value rate, but somewhat at least a different way. This character provides himself with taunts, can give you a decent life boost, while also using just his gun actual little gun move, and it shreds defense as well. With this in mind, he also has a move that in general will take down defense, which is the Vanguard Assault. And this in general could help you out when it comes down to stacking down those defense downs. This character in general is really, really good. So I do suggest if you don't have the first team, he will come in handy. Now, alongside of this, if you do feel like you're lacking a little bit of that DPS compartment, I did mention our other DPS, which was a four star being Mont. She's really helpful as well. If you do have her five-star weapon, which is obtainable at different times, you can very well so deal some nice damage to actually overall well round out Yusuke. 
In total, this team is really, really good. You also would end up using puppets. It helps you out in the damage department while also helping you out in that sustainability department. So either way, they're both really good. You should try to check them out both. But the next one that we're gonna be going over, especially for abilities, is going to be Makoto. So let's go ahead and get into that. All right, so going ahead and looking at the new team here, this is one of the newest teams that recently came out. And boy, oh boy, does it make it very apparent. This team itself is probably one of the best team, if not the best team in the entire game. That's because it revolves around Makoto. Now in this team, you're gonna be using Makoto as your main DPS. If you do have Vino, unfortunately I do not, you would use Vino or you could use Leo, Rayo, but either one, you need to use one of them because they need to be helping out Makoto a lot. Now, when it comes down to the healer that you want to go ahead and use, it would definitely be Marion. There is not really a if in this situation because Morgana doesn't really fit in this team for this way, but you could use him. But Marion's going to be the go to, especially for the attack and pin rate. And then you want to have a navigator that really helps, which is going to be Phoebe or Okeon. I'm not going to explain Phoebe and Okeon this time because we should already know exactly what they do, which is just a bunch of attack stats for your whole team. But in total for Makoto, we're going to go ahead and take a look at her. Makoto kind of brought in a new aspect, which was kind of a transfer, at least a transforming aspect with this or an enhanced ability aspect with this character. Pretty much after getting a certain amount of toughness, at least toughness stacks, which utterly help out her whole kit, she's able to deal some monstrous damage. With this in mind, she's also able to have some anomalies that are actually done on the enemy, which deal some decent damage after they're stacked a certain way, and it helps out a crap ton. Now, you're not really going to be using the heal with this character. You're mainly just going to be using nuclear heat blast and the AOE a little bit here, but mainly just that single target. This allows her to get into that form, and she just does monstrous damage from that point on. Not much to really evaluate on this character. You don't really need her um, five star weapon, but it does make a huge difference. But with this character in general, she is the main just head honcho when it does come down to the nuke category. Now, with this in mind, you want to go ahead and use Vino as your actual support. Vino is going to be a character that no matter what plays a huge part in the nuke scene. The main reasoning for this is because Vino is able to not only have defense shred, he's able to actually increase the nuclear damage that's had here, also increase damage taken on the enemies, and provide herself with some EHR. Now, the EHR side of things is going to help out with the effect hit rate when it does come down to at least the different anomalies she's able to stack on people. This is going to come in handy with her kit and Makoto's kit combined, utterly multiplying the damage they can deal to different enemies, and it makes that heavily apparent. Now, of course, if you don't have her like I do, you could very well use Rayo just as a different nuke support here, in which he's just gonna give you a little bit of defense, but it's not gonna be as helpful as Vino. So I do suggest try to get Vino. This team is absolutely insane with her, and it's just crazy how much she can deal. Once again, when we do have Minami in mind, she's gonna be helping you out with that attack and pin rate. So it just makes this team even more deadly. Now, we're not gonna explain, of course, the two navigators, but those are always gonna be helpful in general. And I do advise to use this team. If you have the characters to do so, do this immediately. Beginner's Guide Worthy, especially when it comes down to this team in general, she's going to be the main person you wanna go to. But we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the next team here before we go ahead and go to our last team afterwards. So let's jump into it. Now taking a look at the early on team here, which is the fire team being on, these are actually one of the most free to play teams that's out here, mainly because you can get her from the picker and her team is really like four star reliant. How this really works is you're going to be using on sometimes cattle as well, because cattle is going to be a really decent sustain for this team. He is going to be the main prevalent part when it does come down to like all the burn stacks and things of that nature. And then of course you could use Phoebe or Okeon. We're not going to explain them once again here on this one. So let's go ahead and get into on immediately. Now, if you guys don't know, on in 2.0 actually gets a heavy, heavy buff, which helps out with concentration stacks and allows her to deal way more damage way quicker. It used to be for her concentration to be six that stacks needed, but now it is four. So she's able to be able to get to that triggering point to deal a lot more of her damage. Now, this character does rely on burns, but with this team that you're going to be using, which is a burn related team, 
she really does get out the damage needed. So Flame Erosion, or the actual name of this one um, later on, I don't have that translation on me, I do apologize. But the third move that she's gonna be pretty much using, that is gonna be your main DPS move, and it's going to deal a ton, especially once we get the update in 2.0. This character is really free to play friendly, you don't really need any dupes for her, and even her weapon is such, you don't really need to get, but is obtainable just from doing some of the side missions that can get you a 5 star weapon. This character is really really good in general, and I do suggest if you want to use a flame team early on, she would be the best to go for. Now when it does come down to the sustain that you're going to have in your team, it would be cattle. Now very well you could go ahead and use Marion for this team as well. Though that's going to at least lack a little bit of one of the main things that makes this team so good, which is burns. With at least the man cattle, he's able to stack at least the burn buffs here and that actually makes him a lot better. But if you don't have him or you feel like that his sustainability is a little less, you could very well use Marion. Now, if we go ahead and take a look at his kit, he does have a single target and an AOE heal while also giving off a single target fire. Now this single target fire move does stack a little bit of a burn so it's going to overall help out the team and generally help out on to get you the damage that you are looking for. But the man, the myth, the legend himself who brings this team together is going to be he. Now he is a very interesting character. He's one of those few characters that utterly changes a little bit of the team and exactly how um, you're able to play this team the correct way. With this, he actually uses these sacrifice stacks here that all in all, not only just increase your damage in general, but also makes it a little bit easier to just control the battle in general with this. So, for a lot of you guys who actually don't know exactly how he works here, we'll go ahead and get into that. Or at least I'll do that in a different video because he's gonna be kind of a tricky one. Pretty much these sacrifice or at least sacrificial type stacks and things like that, will make him more of a DPS than you do think, but it does make on a little bit better. This in general can cause you to do a ton of things that normally wouldn't be possible without him. So he does provide some easy stacks of burn and he does provide some other ways that can give you an extra at least DPS buff as well. So this character is definitely needed no matter what team he is in. So surely do keep that on you. All right, but let's go ahead and take a look at the last team that we're going to cover. Unfortunately, Psy is not going to be covered in this because we do not have a Psy DPS just yet, but we're going to go ahead and go over the Winded team as well. Okay, so looking at the Winded side of things here, we're going to be taking a look at Florette. Now, Florette is one of those niche characters that is actually not as bad as I originally did think, and he actually comes in handy quite a lot. So with this character, he does a decent bit of winded status effects and it's really good to actually get those multi hits off as well. He's also one of the few characters just like Yui who builds up crit rate stats, which all you really gotta do is have crit damage on him to get the utmost amount of damage off of him. Crit damage, deep damage bonus and things like that really will make this character very dangerous. So he's also a really good character to kind of invest in just to have this whole element underneath his fingertips. So with this team, you want to go ahead and use Floret. You want to go ahead and use Riddle and then wrap it up with Marion. Of course, Marion is going to help you out with those attack stats. But if you don't have Marion, Morgana is kind of useful, though Morgana is another choice that you really want to go with, though it does help because he's able to use uh, the Winded status that can take down defense as well. Now with this as well, you want to go ahead and use Phoebe or Okeon. Once again, we're not going to go over those two because we went over them multiple times, but they do help out the team as well. So, Florian himself, he has multi hits. He is able to put on the winded status. He even is able to increase his crit rate and crit damage. That makes this team absolutely insane. As long as everyone's kind of revolving around him, he's able to deal as much DPS as possible. That can kind of a little bit deal pretty decent damage until we get a five star character. He definitely comes in handy a lot. Um, doesn't have too much else that really goes about him, but he definitely does make things a lot easier. Now inside this team, we're gonna be using a different buffer, which is gonna be Riddle. Riddle herself is actually insanely good, but there's always other teams that have better buffers, but not for this team. 
this team, she's able to actually provide some concentrated buffs on your team, overall helping out everybody, giving him the crit rate that he very well so needs or the buffs that he very well so needs to really multiply a lot more of that damage. Now, with this in mind, it does only make him the only DPS on the field, but with the hyper buffs that Riddle is able to provide and then the buffs that or at least Marion is able to provide, it kind of makes up for that lack of a sub DPS. So that pretty much wraps up with all the teams. Now that we've finished this, although it's been a little bit of a long while, let's go ahead and get into Mementos and the Palaces. All right, so going over Mementos and the Palaces here, both of these are really important things, but let's take a Mementos look first. Now Mementos like in the actual game does matter quite a lot. Each map is a little bit different with their respective bosses and they give you tons of rewards. This is going to be one of the main things that you want to try to do immediately or try to at least knock out on um, when you do can because it gives you a lot of rewards and with completing mementos and the respective palaces you're able to get yourself some things for wonder as well that can utterly help out any of your teams that you're going to be utilizing now in 2.0 we do get a little bit of an extension of from right mementos and a new palace as well so it is best to try to knock these guys out when you do get the chance Though some of them are going to be really hard. Now you can beat these guys under leveled, but it's going to take a lot more thinking and it's definitely going to be somewhat of a headache. There are a few in here that are very annoying. I might try to re-record some of the videos that actually go over those annoying bosses and show you guys exactly how to beat them or teach you guys how to beat these guys. But all in all, Mementos is pretty much the same. Now going into the palace side of things, palaces no matter what are able to be done if you don't have them 100%, you can always revisit them and each of them are a little bit different. Now, each of them are gonna have their vast little sections, but by of course completing everything inside of the palace, whether it is mini bosses, collecting all these different types of chests, finding the safe rooms and just regular chests in general, by doing this, you're able to get certain rewards. Each of these rewards can be for EXP, gems, different things in general, as well as an inspiration marking for Wonder, which helps out his actual stats, you can also get yourself a weapon. Now there's two weapons that are at least available here, which is the flame weapon here for offensive, and then of course the defense weapon in general, if you are trying to use a defensive Wonder. Palaces are very much so important, so completing these guys out immediately will give you a weapon dupe as well, and kind of set you up for the future. So try to complete them to your max of minimum efficiency, and try not to miss much. Now, one of the things that you do want to do when you are looking through these palaces is to take into account that you got to look very thoroughly. Some of them have some very tricky little puzzles or either have things that can be very annoying to try and find. So be careful when going around these, know exactly where you need to be because they will have different things that kind of can get you off guard. Now, each one of these floors do have their own percentages. So of course, if you do feel like you're missing something, you can go ahead and click a place right here and there should be a percentage down here that tells you hey if you're missing anything or things like that so be sure to pay attention to this but that's going to wrap up palaces and mementos let's actually go ahead and take a look at the leveling process which was one of the few things i ended up leaving out at the beginning of the video so the leveling process in persona this is going to be one of the few things that a lot of you guys have already been asking some questions about, and it's really not too confusing, but it does take a lot. When it does come down to the leveling process, you have, of course, your wonder who's gonna level up with your account level. That's pretty much easy just by doing different activities. And these levels, of course, are gonna be gained from getting EXP, different little side questing, things like that, or just doing overall dungeons. Now, with this in mind, as for your characters, every usual like five or 10 levels will unlock a level cap. Each of these level up caps here can actually give you some decent things going all the way to 70. As for 80 being the max level, you don't get anything for it, but 70 is where you kind of end a lot of your stuff. All of these level ups will end up unlocking different things here, whether it be your weapons getting unlocked, a new level up for the character, new actual level up for the actual persona, uh, personas. Ah, that's how you know I've been speaking too long, but for the personas and things of this nature. Each of this is really, really important. So you do want to try and at least find out where's a happy medium of what you need to be doing. Now, what I do say is for characters who are your DPSs, try to only focus on their main things they're using. So for example, you're never really going to be using Yusuke's first skill. You're usually going to be using his second skill and his actual um, and his defensive skill, for example, or his counter 
and then of course the combat skills so these are going to be the three you want to level up there's no need for using this unless you're just being a completionist like i am and there's no real reason for it try to be picky as much as possible when it does come down to this because building characters in this game does take a lot of mats so if you're just maxing out everything it will make things a little bit harder on yourself but if you just go ahead and focus a few things small things like that you really would do yourself a favor i do advise no matter what if you're going to go with the leveling system always focus on getting them to their max level first and then focus on getting the air weapon or at least that's how i would go about it their weapon in them are going to give them permanent stats no matter what that are going to be very very helpful to give you that extra edge on things and for characters that actually need those extra edges this really does come in handy afterwards you can then work on their traits which is kind of decent but as i did say before only focus on ones that are very necessary um lastly the thing that you want to go ahead and pay attention is the level up for their actual sets this is where things get a little bit hard. So the only time where you wanna actually start on leveling up sets and things of this nature is when you truly feel ready and you are ready to set aside some different time values with this. Now, the game has made this a little bit easier. Like we do have reset cards. So if we're not actually happy with said um, rolls on these said cards, you're able to go ahead and just re-roll them or either just go ahead and try to get your stamina back or your EXP back to use on a different card. Those cards are obtainable by different events. So of course it is gonna be a little bit harder to do, but it does help out you in the leveling system side of things. But that wraps up the leveling system and how that does work out. So let's go ahead and get into the next topic of the video. And this is going to be confidant recommendations. So confidants are gonna be a huge part of this game. A lot of you guys can do really whatever you want, but there are a few that are a little bit important or at least way more important than others. Alongside with these confidants, they do help out in the um, at least stat side of things where different confidants need to have certain stats to be increased. For example, for Rin, for me, I need more knowledge. Once I get this to 15, I'm able to go ahead and get her confidant status even more so up. Going through said confidant status, you can also get these different items that can help boost it. And if you are actually starting to go through it in general, they can unlock different things such as different gems and things of this nature. Now, as I did say, there are some confidants that are way more worth it than other confidants. And to be honest, you really wanna pay attention to these guys. So one of the first ones I would definitely recommend is going to be Merope. Now I have my Merope kind of low, as you guys can see, it's only level 11. I have not really done uh, a few of things that actually can make this a little bit easier to get done with this character, but Merope is going to be really important because with her, she's able to give yourself persona unlocks and things of that nature. Now you do need knowledge just to make sure that you're able to uh, unlock a lot of her things. So the more knowledge you have, the better it's going to be and easier it's gonna be to actually get this character up. Now, there are also some things that you have to do in order to actually fully unlock um, some of the personas. So she might ask you to fuse a persona for this and then you can continue on with her leveling system or either different things you might have to do with her first to actually do this. But all in all, she's really worth so doing it and at least getting up her whole confidant. One of the other characters that are really worth getting up their confidant level is going to be Moko. Now, Tomoko here in general goes off of kindness. So the more kindness you do have, the longer or at least the better things you will unlock with her. And what she gives you, of course, gems like all of them do. But with this, you're able to get more social points just from doing different things. She's also able to unlock different things such as like different shops that you're able to work at. So meaning the more different shops that you're able to work at, the more money potential you're able to generate for your character to buy said confidants different gifts. These gifts can help you increase your confidant level even faster and different things such as like buying items such as healing items and things of that nature that can really help you out inside of fights if you get into a bind. All in all, Tomoko is really, really good to have. Now, one of the newer characters that you guys want to go ahead and try to focus on is Yumi. Now, Yumi is one of the few characters which allows you to create energy drinks. Now, this character in general, you're going to really try to focus on if you are already in the game and you've already gotten this far. For anyone who's newer on the game, it's gonna take a little bit to get to this, seeing that she was just recently added, but at level 17, this is really where you want to go ahead and really kind of take a little bit of a uh, chance on this. Now, the reason is, is because she's able to actually give you an extra drink in general, which can be helpful, but these allow you to have these said energy drinks that can do certain things and help out your overall 
amount of everything here. Now, in this game, you can only have one lover if I'm correct, but you can still can go, at least go further in their confidants if they're not your lover. As you can see, they're your lover, you get a special avatar. If they're not, then you get a different avatar and you can still keep going. Nothing really binds you from not getting said characters, but it does uh, have different perks here. But all in all, you wanna go for Yumi and then the rest is up to you. Those are really just the recommendations for this. Thanks to Tycon for actually telling me about this as well, because I didn't know exactly what Yumi did here. So um, yeah, thank you Tycon for that. These are one of the ones you wanna go ahead and build, but let's get to the next thing here, which is going to be Persona Inheriting. So taking the trip into the Velvet Room here, there's gonna be a lot of things that we gotta pay attention to. And one of those things is going to be Persona Inheriting. Persona Inheriting is going to be a huge thing for you guys, seeing that a lot of your personas, you're gonna to need to actually inherit some skills that will make them all better. Now, the way to do this is going to be a lot of farming and such like that, that can really be time taking or task good, um, draining here. And this will be more of your like kind of in game or middle game situation where you take some of your personas and you evolve them even further. Now, eventually I'll actually start coming out with persona, the at least series here, how to build these said personas, because there's a lot of things that go into it and persona inheriting goes really in depth pretty much by just either summoning the basic ones or either just doing these missions such as um let's go ahead and go here doing said missions you're able to get little like personas in general or persona drops once you already get the actual um persona itself you're then able to get these coins these said coins are able to then give you certain skills so if we go ahead and click this for example we're able to get defense enhancement or geo now with this, it is totally at random, and this is why I say this is more of a late game thing to do or middle game thing to do, because it takes a lot to really get some of these. Like some of them are really high tiers, and so they're harder to get. For example, we have three of Dominion right here. Dominion is a really hard persona to actually sit here and combine. Now it has some really good stats, but once again, it's all by random. So at this point of time, you are really sitting here risking it all to try and get those characters as much as possible to get said inheritance. This is something you wanna go ahead and do at the end of the game. You have to be very, very picky. And even inside the Persona world, um, Worldwide server, they actually have a list of these guys that you're able to see what inherits what, what's the best for what. So be sure to check that out. I'll have both my server linked in the description and inside the chat. And I'll also have the worldwide server linked in the chat as well, showing you guys join each one because they're going to be really, really helpful. My server is going to be more of a hangout zone slash I'll be helping you guys out personally. And then the Persona Worldwide server is going to be like if you have some direct things that you really need to know about, they might have the answer. That's going to be your place that really is knowledgeable on a lot more things if I don't have the questions. But of course, Hopefully you guys enjoyed a video like this. I went really in depth on the team building. Hopefully you guys don't mind that as well, but Lord or Lord, my mouth is tired of talking. But anyways, hopefully y'all enjoyed it. If you did smash that like button, consider subscribing if you are new and hopefully all you guys who are starting have a fun time. Peace.